Hello and welcome to another episode of Meet the Founder, the video series in which I sit down and interview creatives who have been instrumental in making model AI a reality. I'm Tommy Thompson and in this episode I sit down with Georgios Yanakakis, one of the directors of research for model AI, in which we discuss the challenges of applying groundbreaking AI research into video game productions. Let's hear what he has to say. So, for yourself, it's clear that you already have like a background in games research to some extent, but what brought you into this space to begin with? Was game development something, or even games playing or game development something that you had as a hobby? What led you down this career path? Well, it's been uh, quite a path, quite a journey back in 2001, I believe so, in Edinburgh, in Scotland, Tommy, where I met some interesting people over there. I was doing a PhD in artificial intelligence and I was working with agents and robots because robots were fun back then, or it was the next big thing actually when it comes to research in artificial intelligence. But I was so glad that I met Alex Sampandard in a pub in, in Edinburgh. Uh, and we were discussing about my issues. I couldn't get these robots working because they were breaking all the time. You know, their hardware was broken, the sensors didn't work. So my algorithms would fail, I was miserable, and um, all of a sudden I have Alex there discussing about his work, which was in Quake, back in the days, Quake 2. <laughs> so, so I was like, really, is that serious research? Can you actually use Quake to do anything serious with artificial intelligence? He was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, it's a wonderful environment, it doesn't break, it's quite complex. So how about you bring in your algorithms and test, test them out there? I was like, okay, let me talk to my supervisor and then now. Uh, sure, I'll, um, I'll see how that goes. And uh, this is the moment of, oh, but it, this, this was a turning point in my research as a whole, I think, uh, in my research career. So all of a sudden I have these algorithms been tested in, um, well, back in the days, Prey Predator games, Pac-Man Pac and the like. So it's been a while. <laughs> Um, and since then, actually, I have been active, an active researcher in uh, artificial intelligence and games, all the way to models, model AI's foundation, let's say, four years ago, where a, a team of wonderful people sat down and thought about transferring all that knowledge that we have gotten through research on artificial intelligence and games into a company back in the days. There was no company, to the best of our knowledge, that could actually deliver this unique proposition of bringing the very best of research to a product or to a set of products that could be used in um, game development and design, right? So I think what model brings is that collective experience and network of people that have been really active over collectively many years, like 30 for 40 years of um, AI and games research, game development and game design research and actual production into products, ideas, concepts initially, then ideas and finally products. And um, well, I'm excited to be part of this team. So speaking of, you were talking about there, the subsequently like bringing forward model AI and building that into a company, which made sense because you were applying all of these AI research concepts and techniques that weren't really getting the same level of exposure in kind of industry practices and productions. I guess for yourself, what was the biggest concern that you had when all of this was getting started? All right, that's a very good question. I had several concerns because I'm genuinely a person of concerns. That's why I'm an academic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I criticize more or less everything. Um, I was concerned about more or less everything, to be honest. Um, the algorithms were there, the ideas were there, but we never put the algorithms to to the scale that we test them out today and to to the magnitude and to um, actual game productions, games, commercial games that people play. Back in the days, we would test our ideas in, let's call it uh, in vitro, right? So you have like some cool uh, algorithms, you would test them out in games that you would develop you are happy with the result, you will publish a paper, and then that's, that's all. So the challenge is to transfer the outcomes to in vivo products, like the sort of live in actual game productions that people play. And I think um, all of us in research, 
me personally, and I think Model AI and any other company that deals with actual games, any other AI-based company that deals with actual games, is has faced and is facing this struggle. Uh, the moment you realize how challenging it is to deal with these new environments that are quite noisy, uh, what you get as data, let's let's put it this way, when it comes to human demonstrations, for instance, or when it comes to pixels or anything else you get from from uh, game companies is it's quite limited. Often it's very noisy. Um, very often you don't really have access to the game engine because why should you? So you end up with all these limitations and additional problems that you haven't ever thought when you were doing when you're doing research, right? And um, I guess it's a challenge or several challenges, and uh, I guess an opportunity to actually overcome those challenges. Um, and part of the reason we we founded this company was that to to break our, our own let's say frontiers to to um, to to open up our own horizons as researchers and get all these ideas that uh, we're living up in the clouds to something that is visible, is tangible, and people can play with. You speak particularly to this challenge of of, tr of transposing and adapting a lot of this existing work into that space. And like you say, there's so many unknowns. I guess then how important has the team been that's been founded at Model AI in enabling for the success that you've subsequently had? Again, a very good question. I think uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without this team. And I'm not, uh, I'm not exaggerating here in the sense that there's no other team out there that is dealing with commercial AI tools for testing games that can deliver on that front. And I can be a bit more specific. Uh, collectively, researchers and doctoral researchers, postdoctoral fellows that have been working with us over the years uh, at the University of Malta, at the IIT University in Copenhagen, New York University, and so on, people that have been trained by myself, Julian, Sebastian, people like Christopher, who is trained by us, got together and with all this sort of uh, collective talent, could could reframe the way we, we see games and we, we see our artificial intelligence as applying to games. And um, I don't think we would be able to do that without all this uh, initial talent pool. Now, obviously, the plan is to expand. Uh, we have a core team that is uh, has been working with uh, with these with these ideas and principles for the last three years. But uh, you know, I believe it is now time to scale up and uh, make ideas, convert ideas to actual tangible products. Model AI has been continuing to grow, continuing to work with a number of different companies, refining and building the product as it, as it currently stands. I guess mm -hmm. for yourself, what, what's the thing you're most proud of, of what's, what's happened at Model AI uh, to date over the past four years? Yeah, so uh, Tommy, I think uh, what there, there's some, several things that we developed over the years at Model, uh, several product services for clients, uh, it, it was often the case that uh, those services and products were personalized, particular needs. But then throughout the years, we figure out there's one single need that we meet across any client that we meet, and that is testing, and particularly with AI bots. I mean, this is essentially what what people, what our clients seem to be wanting the most, and we like developing the most, at least I personally like developing the most. If you think of, uh, of the idea of having a plug and play AI tool that sort of sits next to any game um, that one could directly talk to and interact with, and that tool then gets a report of where glitches are, are found within your game. And these glitches could be of any type. I mean, initially we we're playing around with game level glitches, for instance, but uh, if you think a bit uh, outside of the box, you can think of glitches of any type, like behavioral glitches, experience glitches, and so on. The reason why I'm proud about this product is because not only it hosts, let's say, or yeah, it actually hosts all the cool ideas, the research ideas we had throughout the years. You know, it is the meeting point between cool research and actual industrial need in the game industry. So this is the place where the research department model AI with the product department and the engineering department have the most fun with, right? This is the place where we actually develop cool stuff. Speaking about what's coming up in the future, what are the things happening at Model AI right now that you're most excited about? So the journey from now to the envisioned 
plug and play system that is able to be used directly uh, in any game that is out there. So imagine you're a game developer, uh, you, you test out some sort of ideas, you don't have you don't have a way of rapidly knowing exactly how your play how how your game is going to be played and you don't have access to many uh, human resources, user testers that can actually uh, rapidly test your game and you don't want to do that. So you want rapid solutions answers about how my game is played um, quite quite efficiently so the vision is to reach that point where any game company any independent game developer can talk to us and uh, get access to full analytics about what's going on with the game behavioral analytics experience analytics you name it uh, glitches anything that need that the developer needs to know about a game that is developed so to get at this point, it's it's quite challenging. If you think about the, the the technological advancements that need to occur, so that we have a general system that is able to look at any game that is out there and be able to play test it without even having access to the game engine, that is more or less general design in a sense. You have a general AI designer or general AI tester that is able to sort of test and and, and uh, polish any game that's out there. Obviously, that's not an easy task, and um, this is this is the vision we're working towards. Too. And when it comes to technological advancements, there's like what makes me excited. G going back to your questions, is all the the combination of knowledge between computer vision, machine le learning, game development towards achieving that that goal. And don't get me wrong. I mean, no one really knows how to do this. Not even, you know, the biggest player that is out there, because that's not really an easy problem. But I feel we have a very good idea and evidence already towards that direction. And we will, we will actually make it happen. We will have a product that is able to automatically detect behaviors and play test any game that is given out there. And I'm I'm kind. I'm quite confident, actually, with the team that we have, that we will achieve it. So, for yourself, as one of the founders, after all this this time and the success that the company's had to date, what do you think? What's your argument? Why should companies be reaching out to work with Model AI moving forward? Well, I mean, why shouldn't they? <laughs> if you have a game, again, I repeat, if you have a game development studio of any sort of tier. I would argue, independent all the way to AAA. And um, you're looking for a solution for automatically testing your game or for testing your game. And uh, here you have your AI game engine that is delivered by model AI that can automatically, well, we promise that it can automatically test most part of your game, any game that you're given to us, at least not, not now, we cannot promise it now, but um, you know, in the next couple of years, hopefully we'll have that solution that product for uh, for game development. So, I mean, the input we got from most of our clients was this is, this is a great necessity within game development. And uh, our response to that necessity is the AI game engine that we sort of uh, provide as a solution. So there is a need, we are covering the need. AI can capture the bugs that uh, humans might not be able to capture. So you have a companion that um, can add on the existing sort of user testing procedures you are following. I'm not suggesting to, you know, model is, is not here to suggest complete removal of, of human user testing because humans are great in spotting stuff and debugging experiences and behaviors and so on. But AI can, can be a great assistive tool in that uh, endeavor. So I think um, if you want your game to feature, to be of top quality and you know polished before it reaches its audience, you might want to talk to Model AI because uh, humans are great, but they have limited capacity in spotting stuff, right? And AI is great, but it also has so many other limitations. So let's work together with humans and AI to deliver the best possible games out there. Georges, thank you so much for your time today. And also to all of you for checking out this video. Stick around here at Model AI to find out even more about the work that we're doing here on advancing the state of the art in artificial intelligence for video game productions.